Hello. I spent many years reading and rereading many of the quotations and interviews made by Nikola Tesla. Um, some of the stuff that's most famous in quotation by him is not really that incredibly important. No. The most incredibly important stuff I've found is some of the stuff that nobody hardly ever mentions. And I'd like to mention a few here, and of course the ramifications. Obviously, as I've said countless thousands of times over and over again, that Mother Nature cannot be complex. We have to ask if uh, a uh, cosmological uh, system, if the center holds or not. In the case of quantum, the center does not hold. Um, in uh, collecting together all of the quotes and interviews made by Nikola Tesla, I can easily say that the center does hold. I'd like to make a few important observations about uh, three of his quotes, one of which is somewhat tangential, so I'll mention it first, is that uh, a lot of people think that of the countless inventions Tesla made, the one that he's most uh, happy or pleased with himself on is that of his AC generator, and that's not the case. I posted in my book on magnetism, which is free on archive.org. A very, very important interview with Nikola Tesla where he says that they uh, may uh, improve or uh, outstrip his AC generator invention, but the one thing he's most proud of is his discovery, in his words, of uh, rotating uh, magnetic fields. He said, above all else, he said, everything may change in the future, countless new inventions and upgrades, and so, but he says, for all time, or basically everlasting, is his discovery, quote unquote, of rotating magnetic fields. Now, nowhere does Nikola Tesla define magnetism, um, but uh, anyway, that's his uh, quotation on rotating magnetic fields. Uh, the second one, and I'm paraphrasing it here, I'm sure you could actually put the direct quotation below, word for word verbatim of what Tesla said. He said, but then he said, if we look at the universe in terms of uh, vibration and frequency, that this is the secret to the universe. And he's absolutely correct on this. Nikola Tesla's uh, cosmic cosmology and also, too, uh, his uh, field theory rationale. The center does hold. Um, one thing that I, of course, was never taught because nobody knows. And the only person I can actually say, and he gets about 20% of it wrong, but still 80% accuracy is incredibly high, is that of Walter Russell and his discovery of the nature of light. If you look at it superficially, you know, you'd think that this guy is a bit of a quack because what it does is it runs contrary to everything you and I were taught. And uh, I was able to expand on the last 20% of what uh, Walter Russell knew on light since he never defined a field and uh, he did not understand electricity versus the dielectric. You know, dielectric, and of course I recently, and the, the link is below, made a glossary of definitions between electricity and dielectricity and of course uh, I guess I can call myself a master on what magnetism actually is, is that Walter Russell never defined the dielectric and he never defined the field, but he got light right. And uh, supposedly, as the story is, uh, Walter Russell gave uh, a copy of his Universal One book, which I digitized and put out there for everybody. You could find it all over the web that uh, Nikola Tesla told uh, Walter Russell to uh, keep it a secret you know, bury it something like for a thousand years because it's beyond the comprehension of current humanity, and it is. Superficially, it seems uh, bizarre or obtuse to speak about light uh, not actually having a speed. It's a rate of induction. Light's not an emission. It's not a particle. It's not a wave. Waves don't exist. It's not a wave-particle duality. Mother Nature does not deal in dualities, which imply inherent contradictions. Light, of course, is a coaxial ether torsion circuit. That sounds complicated, but it's not. An ether torsion circuit is just saying a coaxial circuit of an ether perturbation modality. And that kind of superficially sounds complicated, but it's not. But light is, uh, um, light is everything. And one thing that I work, worked in my mind on for many years, and I come back to it occasionally, is that if nature is divinely simplex, which it must be by definition, it has to be. If we know this about uh, nature, natura naturans, then we can apply Platonic and Pythagorean retroduction, a lost art in a booklet that I'm working on, by the way, to say, well, if nature is divinely simplex, then there must not be 
a reconciliation between light and matter, or atoms. I've never denied nuclear particles. It's undeniable that there's only fundamentally one nuclear particle, since all free neutrons become uh, protons after something like 14 minutes. It's called neutron decay. You could look it up. Every scientist on Earth agrees that a free neutron becomes a proton. Well, if that's the case, then fundamentally there's only one nuclear particle. Is that the reconciliation of light and matter must therefore necessitatively, or as the ancient Greeks said, anankye, must necessitatively exist. So light and matter must be one thing. So when Nikola Tesla said um, that uh, the secret of the universe is understanding frequency and vibration, I'm paraphrasing Nikola Tesla, of course, but this is what he said, then all of this unfolded in my mind you know, over the past few years, but I didn't apply it uh, maybe succinctly or apply enough of a laser focus you know, mental acuity on that particular problem with the reconciliation of light and matter as I'm, you know, you struggle to pay the bills and, you know, keep things in order in this mundane, profane world of nonsense, bills, and BS that I didn't have the time to focus my mind on it. But there must be one thing. And that is the case that uh, if we look at light and we speak about light generically, we're talking about EMR, electromagnetic radiation. Yeah, since it is a coaxial circuit and light has properties, it's not an emission, it's not a particle, it's not a wave, not a wave particle duality. All of this stuff is nonsense, of course. Is that radio, light, gamma radiation, and matter are fundamentally the same thing. Recently, it was proved in experimentation that ultra, ultra high focused, uh, coherent energy generated matter. And I always knew several magnitudes above gamma radiation, and gamma radiation was deadly radiation. The only reason it's deadly, gamma is light, that's not my opinion, that's a fact. Gamma radiation is just ultra, ultra powerful, extremely small volume, because the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance, um, ultra high energy light. And the only reason why it's so insanely dangerous is because it acts like quasi-matter. In other words, it's basically like a particle weapon. Gamma radiation actually is a particle weapon, something that uh, governments and the military have been studying for ages and ages and ages. The reason why it's so damaging is it breaks apart our, uh, you know, our DNA, causes 10 million maladies, but it's just high energy light. And many magnitudes above gamma radiation, we would have what is a ZTP or a zero time particle where we actually have quasi-stable light. I humorously call it hard light because it's both accurate and humorous and easy uh, to remember at the same time. And so the reconciliation of light and matter, when understood correctly, is so divinely simplex, it was right underneath my nose the whole time, is that there is no distinction. And many philosophers throughout ancient times, including present, have worked on the reconciliation of light and matter. At some fundamental level, they knew that the universe and Mother Nature had to be so simple that there's not two separate things as light and matter. Someone might superficially say something as stupid as, well, energy is matter and matter is energy. And that doesn't get to the heart of the matter, but that kind of superficially scrapes it. But they never tried to reconcile the two in a logical, intuitive fashion, you know, to say that, hey, this is how nature must exist. Um, so we actually have the basis of all mass and matter being high energy light. And we know this is true since we see um, uh, galactic jets, they're also called uh, astrophysical jets, emitting trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen. In other words, that the uh, axes of geomagnetic precession of these black holes, they actually have a portal whereby which energy is escaping. And the energy is of such incredibly insane high nature is that it's matter. See, what we're actually not seeing at the uh, polar axes of these black holes emitted uh, are light, but it is light. It's just ultra, ultra high energy light, way above that of gamma radiation. And way above, and I don't know how many uh, magnitudes above gamma radiation it is, maybe 40 or 50, we have a fundamental particle that we call a nuclear particle. So the basis of all matter is just light. Matter is light, and light is just Visible light, or like gamma and whatnot, is just ultra low energy matter. High energy light is matter, and low energy matter is light. And everything is, like Nicholas Tesla said, vibration and frequency. Absolutely everything, both self-cancellation, constructive-destructive interference, 
magnitude, application, you got light, radio, gamma, radiation, fundamental matter. It's just an ether torsion circuit, which is all light is, or EMR. So that's Nikola Tesla's second quote. Um, Nikola Tesla goes, I'm trying to remember his third quote. This is what happens when I think about 10,000 things at once. It kind of obfuscates my mind. Humble apologies for that. There we go. Um, you have to forgive me on that one. Um, oh, yeah, sound wave in the ether. This is what... <laughs> This is the problem I encounter every day. You have to apologize for me. Uh, I have to apologize to you. Forgive me, excuse me. When your mind thinks about 10 things at once, Nikola Tesla said that light can be nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. And this, of course, goes to Nikola Tesla's statement that everything is uh, vibration and frequency. Nikola Tesla is right on that. Nothing emits sound, by the way. We all have an idea of that something has a speed, it has a velocity, and if it has a velocity, something's moving, you know, from point A to point B. Nothing emits sound. Sure it does. Sound is a speed. Doppler effect and all that stuff. Yeah, no. Sound is a perturbation of uh, the air, which is nitrogen and oxygen, a little bit of argon. By releasing of energy, we cause a vibration in the medium. When Nikola Tesla says, and people don't get this for some odd reason, when Nikola Tesla says light is a sound wave in the ether, He's using the best analogy possible because sound is a perturbation in the medium. Sound is not an emission. It's not a particle. Yeah. Sound has a frequency too. High frequency, low frequency. Same as light. So the perfect analogy is exactly what Nikola Tesla said. said nobody really ever quotes this from Nikola Tesla and it's so incredibly important and nobody seems to understand it. The very best, most perfect analogy is that. Light is a sound wave in the ether. Light is not an emission. Light doesn't have a speed. Sound doesn't have a speed either. Sound is the maximum rate of induction of the medium against itself, or the hysteresis of the medium. Yeah, the hysteresis of the medium in the ether is what we call C, speed of light. So that's not a speed, though. It's a rate of induction. You see, light slows down when it passes through water or glass. Sound actually changes speeds or rates of induction when it encounters uh, extremely dense air, what's cold air versus very hot air, which is uh, rarefied, um, or fog. Countless things actually affect uh, the speed of sound. Also, to the medium that it passes through, sound waves in the water, you know, used by whales and whatnot, you know, they total different sound, total different frequency, and also to speed of propagation. As opposed to if, uh, not that whales do, you know, emit sound above water. You know, they're talking to each other under the water. So, this is the perfect analogy for light and sound, and Nikola Tesla used that. And nobody seems to get it. See, what's the perfect analogy for, the, for light? Well, Nikola Tesla said, light is a sound wave in the ether. Well, that's interesting because sound is not an emission. Sound is not a particle. Sound is not a wave, it's the, the hysteresis of the ether, ether a set frequency as opposed to itself, or the hysteresis thereof of that uh, uh, perturbation of the medium, which is what light is also. Not a particle, not a wave, doesn't have an actual speed because nothing is traveling. Like when you talk, you generate sound, you're not emitting anything. Sure you do, it's got a speed, everybody knows emission is sound, sound emission. Just like light emission, because everybody knows you know, when you turn a light bulb on, it emits photons, and photons are traveling out at the speed of light. That's right. Mm, yeah, that's what my science teacher taught me. Yeah, sound is a, a photon. It's a wave-particle duality. <laughs> but nature doesn't have any dualities, because that contradicts nature at its fundamental core, which we cannot do and violate Occam's razor. Can't do that. So these are my favorite three quotes from Nikola Tesla. And anybody could read it and go, well, that's nice, that's a nice Nikola Tesla quote. It's like, well, what about understanding it? If you understand it, then you have comprehension. If you have comprehension, you have wisdom. Being able to regurgitate, well, I can quote Nikola Tesla all day. It's like, yeah, but do you understand it? Well, you know, that's not important. All I need to do is regurgitate it because I got like a multiple guest test tomorrow and I just need to be able to bleh, barf up and regurgitate. <laughs> the information. I don't have to understand it. Just like a doctor doesn't understand anything. 
It is regurgitating facts and empirical data. Input data. <laughs> that was my imitation of a robot. Input data. <laughs> this is why schools and college don't actually teach you stuff. They indoctrinate you and they fill your head with useless facts, but they don't teach you how to understand and comprehend, which is of paramount importance. <sighs> Rant over. I hope you liked this video. If you did, any donation is warmly welcome, especially at the holidays when I'm broke. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, God.